In this video, we'll see how to answer the following question. Does the matrix equation AX equals B always have a solution? That is to say, for a given matrix A, does AX equals B always have a solution, no matter what the vector B is? Let's explore this question with an example. We'll look at this question for this specific matrix A. And we ask, does the equation, this matrix times an unknown vector X equals B. Here B is fixed. Does this always have a solution, no matter what? to be is. Well, in the previous material, the previous set of notes, we made the observation that matrix equations are really vector equations, are really systems of linear equations. And we said how to solve an um, equation like this. You set up an augmented matrix with these as your columns, and you perform Gauss-Jordan elimination. But these Bs make performing Gauss-Jordan elimination difficult. Like there's no way we can plug this matrix into your calculator. You would need to have numbers here instead of B1, B2, B3. If you wanted to ask your calculator to do the row reduction, for you. Fortunately, we can get around that. This is an augmented matrix. So it's got this coefficient matrix and this augmented column. And it turns out that if we perform Gauss-Jordan elimination on this augmented matrix, that will perform Gauss-Jordan elimination on this coefficient matrix. And you can plug this into your calculator and do a row reduction on it. And you'll find that this coefficient matrix, when you perform Gauss-Jordan elimination, turns into this. What you don't know is what this last column turns into. But fortunately, we don't need to know what this last column turns into. Let's remind ourselves what would have to happen for there not to be a solution. The only reason you wouldn't have a solution is if after you performed row reduction, you got a row that looked like this. All zeros except for a non-zero entry in the last column. 
And without knowing what these numbers are in the last column, we can see that this first row clearly doesn't look like that because of this one here. And the second row clearly doesn't look like that because of the one here. And the third row clearly doesn't look like that because of the one here. So we are not in that state. This matrix equation or its corresponding system of linear equations is consistent. No matter what we had in this column and no matter what Gauss-Jordan elimination does to the last column, we do have solutions. Now, the reason we didn't have a row that looks like this is because of that one in the first row, that one in the second row, and that one in the third row. Notice that after we performed Gauss-Jordan elimination, these ones are leading entries. In other words, this is a pivot position. This is a pivot position. This is a pivot position. And we've seen a special case of the following theorem. If A and X are of proper dimensions so that you can multiply them together, then AX equals B always has a solution if and only if Every row of A contains a pivot position. And now I'm going to state another theorem closely related to this. Let A be an M by N matrix. The following are equivalent. What we have written here so far is just the theorem on the previous page. AX equals B always has a solution if and only if every row of A contains a pivot column. But now we'll add a few more equivalent statements. AX equals B is a statement that B is a linear combination of the columns of A. Remember, that's how we defined A times X, as a linear combination of the columns of A. So this statement here is the same as this statement here that every vector B in RM is a linear combination of the columns of A. Now, try to cast your mind back a little and recall a previous definition. We defined the span 
of a set of vectors to be all of its linear combinations. So saying that a vector is a linear combination of some other vectors is the same as making a statement about the span. Our theorem is now completely written down. These four statements are equivalent. For any matrix A, they're either all true or all false. Let me end with just a very quick bit of terminology. This statement, statement four, is often kind of abbreviated. We say that the columns of A span are M.